after this amazing stories and speeches coming with an end with a with a story which has like so much of up and downs i wish you all won't get bored of hearing it but yeah it's uh so what you do it's my life a story it is what it is so uh, you know what people say life is a race people say life is a fight but i always take life as a as a just chance to try new things to try good things to try the bad things of it and try to everything everything every moment enjoy it you know and just take advantage of good and bad so, of it so i was four years old when i study when i started studying when i started getting educated at home by my mom and in a underground class now by our house which a lady woman was teaching all these women and that was the time where taliban was ruling previously in uh like before 2001 so and i was just four years old but in this class there was like so young ladies coming and studying from there, the new government come in in 2001 and the school started, so I went to school. I started school in Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, for seven years of school, and then we went to another province. A province so conservative, a province much close for women. I, I really feel so bad by being there for first few days and months. But I love it now more because that province teach me a lot, taught me a lot, and I learned a lot there. I, I went the rest of my school there when I was, my school was one hour far from my house, from where I was living. And in that specific time of day where I was going to school, it was just me as a one girl, all this community, all this big amount of families living in there with school uniform and walking to school. And without any burqa, without any cover on face, just normal dress, normal scarf. But the road I was driving or I was walking always, it was so dangerous because all the governmental and non-governmental organizations and offices were there. And because it was wartime, we had a big amount of attacks on this way. And I got four times injured into different timeline because of that attacks. And it, but yeah, I survived. I, I, I'm still alive. Uh, after that, after like so hard time, after when my, I was in 11th grade uh, of school, my dad told me, stop going to school. You're just 14 years old girl. You have so much time. You can continue it when we are in Kabul and capital of the country. There is a bit safer. So here, if you continue going to school, maybe you die. But I was going to school when my dad was in office, hiding from him. And maybe, and sometime when I was caught by him, oh, seriously, my dad was a colonel. He was a military man. So yeah, I had to face some tough time with him. But yeah, I, I continued this life, school life. And then I went to university. When I was in university, December 2014, I got a car accident. I was one month in deep coma, fully right, my right side of body was fully paralyzed. Uh, so finally, doctor was telling my family that 99% the girl is dying. She's dying. If she stays alive, she will lose her memory 
she will lose her mind, or maybe stay all lifetime half paralyzed. But once again, it was luck, I survived. I came to Afghanistan, I started working there as a mayor, and tried to fight for women's rights, for women education, because I, I saw how difficult was my personal experience this way, so I just wanted to uh, use my own opportunities and my own knowledge and what I have to give this back to other ones. So, but in that way, I, I got first time attacked by uh, Taliban in March 2020, just day after I returned back home from US after receiving International Women of Courage Award. I got attacked, I saw bullets crossing my head, I saw bullets crossing my fiance's head because we were both in the same car. And I, I saw it's like, it's just passing death, you know? After that, I got a gas explosion in my house and I got burned. These all the scars of that in my hands and my feet. And I saw myself in fire. I saw myself, I'm just burning and it's fire on me. I'm not shouting, I'm not crying. I'm just trying to, you know, put it off and then get to hospital. This time also I survived and then second attack of Taliban and the third attack of Taliban. And finally, just 20 days later of on this last attack on my life, they murdered my dad just in front of our house. Oh, it was the murder of my dad. I still, I still have that pen. It's been like, it was 5th November, 2020, but I feel it's just now I still have that feel. Uh, I had so good time with my dad, all up and downs, up, all up and downs, like he was an Afghan dad and I was a girl who wanted to try more. It was like to give each other more difficult times. It was like our life mostly. But I was the, he was always telling me uh, that I am one of the prayers of him that God has accepted. And I am a accepted prayer of him. So, because he wanted first child as a daughter. So I think with all that up and downs, this is, this is the thing that makes it more perfect and loving. So yeah, it was tough. I lost my dad. By losing my dad, I thought, yeah, this is the time maybe I die. The first few seconds I heard this news, I was like, I'm done. There is no life anymore for me. But just after two minutes of shouting in a car, I am crying while I, I was breaking into many, many pieces. I realized that if I am not standing strong, first, who's taking care of my family? I'm the elder child, I have the responsibility. Secondly, if I'm breaking, then, you know, then what will happen? I need to stay strong. You know why? I know you have this question in your mind that after this all tough time, you know, how this image of someone can like still say, okay, no, you know, let's still have a try, let's still give a try. It's hard for human being, it's hard for your mental health, it's, it's hard in a very, in every way, it's so hard. I experienced it, that's why I, I know it's, it's so hard. But I need to do it. Because when I was six years old, there was my dad's friends coming to our house to just meet my, my dad 
and they were sitting in a guest room. And my younger brother, like I'm the elder one, so he's younger than me, he had he was carrying tea and teapots and glasses to this guest room. And as I really wanted to go there and talk to these men and like, I was always like that. I really love to uh, listen to them and talk to them. I just tried to get into this room, but it was my mom, like stopping me from my shoulder, like, and then I was like, why? You know, I cried. Why he can go? He's younger than me. He can go, but I not. Why? The reason was so clear. You are a, a young girl and you're not allowed. I learned how difficult, how tough, how important is this fight for just a equal living opportunities for me, for my gender, for my pupil, for the pupil, for the woman of my country. So, and that was the time I realized as a woman, as a just person from a different gender than the main of the society, I need to go a long way. I need to fight a long way. So it was, it was just six years old. And now I'm 27. Six years old child, like, they don't have to go through all this, you know. They have, I, I really love, uh, I really love children to have their, like, you know, this child, childhood life perfectly. Because that's, that's the only time that you need, you, you don't need to be careful about anything. You just give anything that you want and you want. You don't care about what people think. You laugh, you make mistakes, you cry, whatever you do. But I was a young girl when I was six years old. And that was the moment I realized what is life for me as a woman in this society. As a woman, we had to give up for like so many things. Afghanistan is a country where it sell 80 more than 80% of women population are uneducated. But we fought all 20 years, since 2001 until end of 2021. We fought for everything so hard. We sacrificed a lot. We women in my country, we have been always beautiful part of the developments of our country. But unfortunately, we have to pay for any conflict in the country more than any other one living in that country. We, we have been victims, victims of politics, victims of everything happen around, happening around us. Victim of people's, you know, literacy. <laughs> Victim of uh, this close and dark minds of people. Victim of lack of knowledge of people. Victim of bad behavior of people. Like so many things that makes us victim in that society. After all that fighting, after still standing so strong on our ground, it was a time, 15 August 2021, that we came to a corner that we lost everything. We came to a corner that now we are seeing our girls not going to school. We came to this corner that they are stupid people sitting in a room full of men deciding about what I should wear, what I should talk, what I should do, because I'm just a woman. We came to a corner where we got abandoned by everyone. 
the leaders of the world and the leaders of our community, our country. They took pen out of our children's hand. They took opportunity out of our hands and our days and our life. They took chances out of our lives. They took all the possibility which was able to give us a good life out of our lives so they can benefit it in some way. The leaders of the world maybe can ask for votes from their people. We can't for, no one can ignore uh, elections of United States three elections or three presidential elections until they were involved in Afghanistan. It was just the hot topic of the election was Afghanistan. Even when all the presidents, they were like asking for votes. So my country was just this. We are going through all this because sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm especially until from, from where I'm, I'm here in Europe, I have this thought in my mind, and I, I'm really sorry to, to, you know, sometimes I feel like I, I don't need to have it, but it's, it's natural, it comes to my mind that maybe it's happening because we are not Europeans. Maybe be, we are not Americans, that's why. It's happening to us because, you know, we are just Afghans. We are paying for all these international games in my country, and the victim, once again, it's women. We are losing our life partners, we are losing our life, opportunities, everything. And, and, and it comes to a corner where everyone abandons us, they are closing their doors, they're not talking anyone. There is no hot, like hot topic or maybe headline on news is in Afghanistan because Afghanistan is not any more important. There are so big things happening to this world, which is more dangerous and which are more dangerous than Taliban of Afghanistan. And that needs to be cured. With all this, with all these difficulties, with all these things that we are going through. Trust me, believe me, we women of Afghanistan, we are not giving up. We are still standing our ground, we are still there, we are still fighting. You know why? Because we believe it's not just a fight of darkness, it's, just, it's not just a fight of light, shine, and good things, and, and whatever, like good things all, against darkness, it's a fight that could remain in the history of the world as a success victory for women. And we want to make it happen. It's important. It's so important. We were the victim of all the conflicts in my country. For more than 50% of population, it, they are women in Afghanistan. So all these 50% of population, like now about 17 millions, we have already, we have been already through all these difficult times. But I don't want my daughter to go through this. If I don't want my daughter to go through this, I need to fight for her today. That's why we are not giving up. We are not giving up. And at the end, I have a short message by apologizing with all beautiful men and amazing men and courageous men sitting in this room or whoever listening. Woman, we need to take the lead of this world. The world needs love. And no one else can give this love better than us because we know as a mom, as a daughter, as a sister, as a wife, and as a like whatever else in relation, how important it is to give love 
and how easy it is for, the, for us to just love and give love. And we can start it by educating ourselves, taking the lead of our own communities, and take it to forward. Because I always believe if you want something, then entire globe will join hands to make that possible for you as soon as you try harder for it. So please, I, I, I really wish we could do this sooner. Because what? Because, yeah, the world is tired of so abnormal decision of abnormal main leaders. Thank you so much. <laughs>